Welcome back. Let's take a look at the uh, solutions to the challenges there. So you were asked to add a little bit of method work to the player. And we said we just added to a couple key presses here just to make it simple for us to use. So let's get right to it. The first one was the R key. It said use the random method to get a number. Now, good thing to do here is we can just actually key in the random method into the help file. And we see random returns a random real number. Notice we're used to using I random range. This one just uses random. So let's give this a go here, see what it does. Now let's just uh, say value equals random 10. And let's just do a little show message of it. Okay, give this a run. You'll see here, this is an example of a method that takes one parameter in and returns one decimal number back. So that's the big difference here, as you can see these numbers are decimal numbers that are coming back. Okay, next one. It said add event key press to the M key and to go use this method called motion add. Now you'll see just when I type it, it says motion add, give it a direction, give it a speed. If you wanted to, you could have typed it in here, motion add, check out what it's about, returns, nothing. Okay, so this method just does a task. And so adds motion and speed, let's give it a go. We know it's direction and speed should be easy enough. So let's go motion add direction. Um, we didn't really say what direction. Let's just go 60, speed, 3. Okay, give that a go when I hit the M key. So I hit M, and you'll see I keep hitting M, right, and it adds it. Now remember I have friction on, right? Well, that's sort of nice. It's a way to sort of add motion to something quickly. Nice little method. There you go. Now for the next one. Let's go check this one out here. This one wants us to do key press letter E. We're going to check if a place is empty using the position empty method. So let's see here. When I start typing it, position empty. We see here, give it an X and a Y. It tells you whether it's empty or not. Now this method sends us back true or false. When we actually look at this one in the documents, position empty, you'll see here it returns Boolean. Remember that's the true or false ones. So we can use an if statement with that and see if it's true or false. So let's say here, let's say if position empty and the coordinates I'd given you were 96, 208. So if position empty is false, let's actually just check to see empty is true. So if it's, uh, we had said if it's false. So if it's false, we'll do a little show message. Not empty. And then I can do a little else. Else, I know it must be empty. Okay, so that's sort of one way to do it here. Now, I know there's a hamburger there, so when I run this, it should say not empty. So let's see what happens. Now, it doesn't matter where I am. I'm just checking to see if this location here is empty. Hey, that's not good. Now, when we hit the E key here, it says to use that position empty method. It's going to key it in here and look what this one's about. Position empty. Returns whether a position is empty or not. All we have to do is give it an X and Y position as an argument. And it says it's going to return a Boolean. Now, remember, Boolean is true or false. So I can just use my true or false for that one. Okay, so let's go forward here. Let's just ask a question here. Let's say if position empty and the position it wanted was let me quickly check was 112 208 so if that position is empty i'm going to show a message saying 
empty. Else, I'm going to show a message saying not empty. Now, what have I forgotten here? Oh, there's a double quote there. And for beginners, you might put that there for now. So if position empty sends me back a value true, so if true equals true, that's true, it's going to print empty out. Now, the neat thing is, is with these methods that send back true or false, you don't actually have to put true if you're checking for true, because that'll just read if true empty. So I don't know, for beginners, sometimes I leave that in there just, you know, so it holds the pattern, but it's not needed. Now let's give this one a go here. That's where my hamburger is, and so it should be saying not empty. So I hit E, not empty. That's pretty good. Whereas if I change the values here to, you know, a little bit less, like down a bit, it should print out empty this time. Okay, so that position right around there is empty. Perfect. That's that one. Let's use that D key to fire uh, an arrow to the upper left corner here. Key press, letter D. Now this one says to use that point direction method. So there's this method there called point direction. And when we look it up in the help file, you'll see the point direction, very similar to what we saw with point distance in the uh, lesson video. You give it an X and a Y position of the first position. Then you give it an X and Y position of where you're trying to go to or what you're trying to look at. And it'll calculate out the direction in degrees. Perfect. So it returns a real number. So let's go back and use that one. Now the direction I'm trying to get is from my X and my Y position, because this is the player calling this code. And I'm trying to go, we just kept it simple, to 0, 0, the upper left corner. Once I know this direction, now I can make an arrow. I'll just call my arrow ABC, instance create, from my X and Y position, make an arrow, and ABC, set the speed, and ABC, set your direction equal to D. Remember, that's the value. This sent me back an answer. I'm keeping track of it in D. That arrow's direction should be set to D. Give this a go. Hopefully he's always going to fire towards the upper left corner. So not bad. Keep in mind the upper left corner is over here, right? So it's working okay. I didn't change the angle of the arrow, but, uh, you know, it still works. Now the last one we had there was to see if the player is within a 100 pixel radius circle of the center of the room. So I think we put this one in the R key. Oh no, the C key for center. And when the C key hit, it named that neat little method there. And that neat little method is called point in center. So point in center. When you look this one up, hey, let's just go here to the help file and see what I've mistyped here. Point in, oh, it's point in circle. So there we go, point in circle. So you give it a point, and that's the coordinate of the point to check. You give it a position, which is the center of the circle, and then the radius of the circle. So this here is the center of the circle, which should be the center of the room, which is 400, 300. The radius of the circle is going to be 100, and px and py... I'm going to make that the uh, players, X and Y, so we can just say X, Y. So let's give this one a go. So this was point in circle. And this method, if you're watching there, returns true or false. So I can ask a little if question. If point in circle. So if my X and my Y and the circle's X, the circle's Y, and the radius was 100. So... If this point is inside of that circle, 
that's a true. Let's just do a little show. Oops, I'm supposed to give points. Points equals points plus a thousand. That's going to be a lot of points. We'll see the points fly up when I hit the center of the screen. Let's give that one a go. Just expand that a tiny bit. And that should be our last one. So as I move to the center, here come the points. Oh, wait, I have to hit the C key. There we go. So I'm hitting the C key. And you can see it works until I'm outside that circle. And there's obviously that imaginary circle is there. And when I go inside it, it works nicely. Okay, so a good little example, right? Lots of methods there. Hopefully that sort of gets you at least reading the documents and able to use them a little bit better. Okay, next lesson, we're going to take a look at how some of these methods send back the IDs of objects because those methods are a little bit trickier for the beginner to understand. So we'll see you in that lesson.